Okay, everyone, today I'm going to be putting blood in the vacuum chamber to see if your blood actually boils in space. Now, if you've been a subscriber for a while, you may remember a video I did in the past where I actually put my own blood in the vacuum chamber to check this same thing. But there was a problem with that experiment. The volume of blood that I had was so small that it cooled off very quickly in the vacuum chamber due to the rapid evaporation and so it cooled much below the body temperature. And there's two problems with that. One of them is as blood cools down, its viscosity increases, so it gets thicker. And so it's harder for it to boil. And also at lower temperatures, you need a lower pressure to boil a liquid. And so that means that ultimately my blood kind of didn't boil at all. There were some little tiny bubbles, but it didn't really do anything. I expected it to full on boil. So I kind of concluded that maybe your blood doesn't boil in space. But now I want to redo that experiment with a much higher volume of blood. Now this isn't my blood. This is actually beef blood that was going to be disposed of anyway at a slaughterhouse. And I got some of it to put in my vacuum chamber to test the same thing. Does blood actually boil in a vacuum? Okay, so to make this a real test at real body temperature, I have it at 98.6 degrees right now. And so it's at body temperature right now. Let's see if it actually boils while it's warm like this as opposed to when it was colder when I did the experiment before. So if you're queasy with the sight of blood, you might not want to watch this next part. Okay, does blood boil in a vacuum? Three, two, one. Okay, there we go. 0.7 atmospheres. We're at half an atmosphere in there. We're at 0 0.3 atmospheres. Don't see any boiling yet, but I'd see the bubbles on the side starting to get bigger as the air expands. Okay, we're at 0.1 atmospheres. Oh, I see some bubbles. <laughs> oh, whoa, it's expanding a lot. Holy cow. Whoa, what is going on? Whoa, it's just overflowing now. Oh, that is disgusting. <laughs> so I think this is a lot of the dissolved air that was in there, but also uh, the, the blood is boiling and so it's just creating these steam bubbles, but it's so viscous that it's just pouring everywhere. Whoa, that was really unexpected. Holy cow. That is crazy. I did not expect that to happen. It's filling up the whole vacuum chamber. That is crazy. Now it's like rapidly boiling. Whoa. Okay, so yes, the blood definitely boils in the vacuum chamber. So I think that was a lot of the dissolved air but then also the blood is a little viscous and so it keeps those bubbles. It has enough uh, surface tension to keep the bubbles. So you can see it's just on the floor now bubbling. Oh, that's disgusting. I have to clean this out after. So we're at a full vacuum now and you can just see it on the floor there bubbling. <laughs> it emptied the whole container. Look at that. <laughs> that is crazy. I did not expect that to happen at all. Look at it boiling in there. So yes, your blood definitely, definitely boils in space. <laughs> that was a much more violent reaction than I had seen before with my little vial of blood. So as it's boiling now, it's cooling down quite rapidly. It's spread out around there and so it's cooled down a lot. So you see it's not boiling as rapidly. But if you keep it at body temperature, 
it keeps the boiling point so high that it boils very rapidly. The vapor pressure is extremely high and so it boils really fast. But then as it cools down, it doesn't boil as rapidly. Just a few bubbles here and there. And actually what would happen if we kept this going, probably if we had a smaller volume, it probably wouldn't work with this big a volume, but if we had a small enough volume, it would just keep boiling away its energy so that it would actually freeze. You could actually cold, you could actually freeze the blood in there by boiling it. Okay, let's let the air back in. Three, two, one. Oh. That is disgusting. Yeah. Okay, that was pretty crazy and actually unexpected. I didn't expect it to foam like that and puff up. So the question is, would that same thing happen to the blood inside of your body in space? And the answer is probably not because your body actually has some elasticity to it. Remember that the reason that the blood boiled like that and evaporated and expanded like that was because it was exposed to the vacuum of space. But when you're in space, your blood is actually inside of your body. And so the only way it can be exposed to a vacuum is if your body expands and becomes a vacuum inside of your body. But your body doesn't really expand in space. It will a little bit, so you will increase in volume a little bit, but the pressure inside of your body wouldn't be a pure vacuum. So at most, you'd probably get some air bubbles forming due to the air dissolving out of your blood, but it probably wouldn't boil inside of your veins. If you had a cut or something where it was exposed to the vacuum of space directly, then it would start to boil directly. But this gave a very morbid description of what would happen if the blood in your body were directly exposed to space. Hey everybody, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, remember to hit the subscribe button and remember to hit the bell so that you can be notified when my latest videos out. And head over to theactionlab.com to check out the Action Lab subscription box. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.